I'm Tree and this is Stitchless TV. Now on one of my previous sewing videos I showed you how to make this dress. Well I showed you how to do the facings on the dress and then after it went out there a lot of you asked me to show you how to do the box pleats because I do this really easy way of creating pleats in your fabric before you then start to cut out the shape of your dress or your top. So this is how I create box pleats or pleats in my projects. For today's project, I'm gonna create a shortened version of this dress and, and this dress using some African print fabric. For the top that I'm working on today, I'm using a fabric that's 34, so I've got it going 34 inches across and the actual length of it or width of it, I don't know, is 46 inches. Now that's just for my project today because I'm making a top. If you were gonna do the dress version, then you probably want it longer. So I'm folding it over because I want it in two halves. So I'm just gonna quite casually cut it across. So I'm cutting my fabric into two halves and I've got it right sides together and of course I've got a pattern that I have to match up today but we'll just ignore that for the moment. So first of all if I just work on one of these things so I'll fold my fabric right sides together so I can remember which is the right side. So I'm just going to work on one of them and then I'll do the same on the other one as well. So. For, for the top that we're doing today, I want it to have a box pleat in the middle. Now box pleats are when they, they look a bit like this sort of thing. So it creates a kind of box pleat there in the middle. So first of all, I'm going to fold my fabric in half. So I'm folding the fabric in half. and. I'm going to press it like that because that will just make it easier for me to sew. So get your fabric onto the ironing board and you're going to fold it over down the middle. Now you've got to decide, now you've got to decide how deep you want that box pleat at the front to be. Now I'm doing mine five and a half. So I'm going to measure five and a half away from the fold of the fabric along here and I'm drawing a line going down but what you do need to bear in mind is where you're going to stop. So I know that the scoop of my neck is going to come to where these purple lines are and I want my darts to be no longer than three inches beyond that. So I'm just going to draw a line along here, make a mark where I want to stop and then with the iron I'm just going to press that line because I find it easier to sew if I've got a nice pressed line because then I can see it from both sides but I stop the pressing where I want to stop my stitching to go. So I'm going to, using a straight stitch, I'm just going to go backs and forwards, straight down and backs and forwards and stop there. So I've got some red sewing thread, so it will be really obvious where I'm stitching. Go backs and forwards to close off the seam and just sew straight down that line. And then backs and forwards where you stop. So that's all you have to do to create the first box pleat. Now it's all about the pressing of it. So open out your fabric, we're still on the wrong side, and lay it on your ironing board. I've got this handy little tabletop ironing board. So lay it on your ironing board, and you're just gonna start pressing it now. So first of all, with it opened out, press it in that position. and then open it out so that the centre pressed fold line is in line with your stitch line that you've just done 
and then press it in that position. You can check it underneath. And then you've got to press each side. So I'm pressing that side and then I'm pressing that side as well. Now when you do this project for the first time, don't use a tricky fabric. Use something really simple, like I'm using African print cotton. So when I've done that and I turn it over, look how it forms this brilliant box pleat at the front. Right, now you've got to start thinking about where your other pleats are going to go. So turn it over onto the wrong side again. Now I already know that I want my next line to be about five inches away from my centre line. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start folding my fabric, so I'll fold it back. So these pleats are not going to be box pleats, these are just going to be regular just regular pleats. So I'm folding it back, keeping everything really nice and straight and so I'm going to press that so it stays straight and I'll draw a line where I'm going to do my next pleat. Now my next pleat isn't going to be so big. So I'm going to sew straight down there and I'm going to stop in line with where I stopped my box pleat. So these are just normal little pleats now that I'm doing that are about half an inch wide. So again, backs and forwards at the beginning of the seam and then just sew straight down. But I would say it's quite important to stop in line with that where you stopped on your box and backs and forwards. And then you just want to press, press that pleat that you just created. Now I'm pressing it towards the centre, so then when, I, when I'm wearing it my pleats lay going away, which is how I want them to be, but you might want them going towards the centre. So anyway, so, so basically you just keep going and do as many pleats as you want. So I'm going to do another one now about the same sort of distance away. So I'm going to create a fold, fold it back like that, press it draw a line. So my pleat's going to be the same size as the, the pleat that I just did a minute ago. Make sure you stop in the same place and you can just keep going. I mean it might be nice to have these pleats on the right side but mine are on the wrong side at the moment. Now what is very important is that when you come to do them on the other side that you, you really make an effort to mirror it. So if I was doing the other side I'd fold this over in line with the centre and then that's the edge of my pleat. So I draw a line going down and then I press that so that I get the, the pleat in exactly the same place on the other side. And then remember to stop again in the same place as you did for your box pleat. So obviously when you've finished one then you need to do the, the other one as well. Um, and also if you were doing a skirt with box pleats, I mean you could still use a similar sort of method when you're doing a skirt. All I would say is, is that when, you're, when you do a skirt, by all means do this to the fabric first, but you'll probably find that for some of your pleats you just need to grab a little bit more because they're acting more like a, a dart aren't they because they're giving shape to the top of the, the waist. Now that you've finished doing your box pleats you can just go over to my other video where I show you how to make this dress and there you'll learn how to cut the shape of the, the vest top and apply facings to it so you end up with a gorgeous top.
So there you go, see, it really is not difficult to make and if you make yours longer then you end up with one of these dresses. If you decide to play around with my technique of doing box pleats or pleats, I'd love to see them on my Facebook page, Stitchless TV Sewing Channel. And it's worth having a look at my Facebook page because I post lots of extra things there, tips on where to buy fabrics or step-by-step -step tutorials. So do go over and take a look. Thank you so much for watching Stitchless TV. Coming up soon on Stitches TV will be my take on Julian Roberts' subtraction pattern cutting, which is amazing and so easy. Thank you so much for watching. See you again soon. Bye.